Greetings everyone. I wanted to take just a quick minute to give you a little overview and tutorial of what Canva offers as far as presentation and design elements uh, for use in honestly anything from school to work. Um, it's a really robust resource that makes it super simple to create anything you might need, even videos um, as you'll see in a little, a little bit. Um, but there are a few quirks with it, so I just wanted to go over everything that you're going to need to know to get started uh, on any project that you might have. Now, before we get into this, I do want to point out that this is not going to be a comprehensive look at every single part of Canva. It's just going to be a little introduction that will help you get started to know how to do it on your own to then explore on your own. So the two things that I'm going to start by showing you are infographics and presentation, since this type of information is probably the most common within school and the medical field. Uh, so I'm gonna start by showing you infographics. Uh, when you're on the homepage of Canva, um, you are going to have to create an account. Keep in mind that it is free, but they do offer a paid version that offers a lot more support and options, and I'll get into that in just a minute. So infographics, um, I use these for the various syllabi for all my classes. They're really easy and fun to work with. I'm just gonna pick over here. You'll see up under the design tab, this is where you're going to see templates that you can use <coughs> as a starting point. And if you don't like any of those, you can see over here, you can build yours from scratch. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pick uh, this plant one here. You'll see that once you click on the template, it will load it into the infographic page over here and you'll have access to each one of the fields um, within the infographic. And if you wanna add extra pages, all you need to do is add a page um, and you'll see that I clicked on the template and it filled it in that way. So the basics of working with Canva for images like this are the elements. Now the elements are all these little boxes here you'll see that I'm working with. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can go in and type anything you want. Uh, wherever you want, you can resize it, reshape it, move it around, drag it uh, for some reason, dangle it off the edge if you want. You can do anything you want and you have the text editor up here where you can change the fonts. Uh, you can change the font size. Um, different fonts will allow different options. This one doesn't allow you to bold, but others will. Uh, you can align it however you need. You can add bullet points so that then if you're typing and you press enter, it will automatically give you a bullet point. You can add effects to it. So you can make it glow if you want, make it impossible to read. Whatever you would like to do, that's how you uh, work with it. And each one of these boxes is something that you can drag and move around. So if you have a template that you like, but maybe it's not perfect for you, that's okay. You can move the elements around like this. And yes, I do realize this looks hideous as an example, but I'm just showing you how the things work. So you can move anything around that you want. The templates are really there just to save you a little time. If there's a template that you like, go ahead and use that and just make small tweaks, but you can go completely on your own and add a blank page. Now to do that and to play with some of the more uh, in-depth editing features, you're gonna wanna go up to the left of the sidebar underneath design and click on elements. In the elements, you're going to be able to find everything's from lines and shapes. So let's grab this uh, rounded edge square. Let's say we want a rounded edge square. So we'll just take that element. And then let's say we want some text. Down below, you're gonna find a text box where you can pick default styles. Let's just say we want this as a heading. So I'm gonna pick this heading and I'll drag it up. And oh, that's really hard to read. So what would be the best thing to do there? Well, we could change the purple background, but if we like that, we can change the font color to something, let's say, uh, sort of a creamy, sagey green or yellow. I don't, I don't know how it looks on your monitor, but anyway, that's really all there is to it. And as I showed you before, you can adjust the text however you like, and then you can go into the elements. And if you want images, well, let's use the cat. You can put the cat in there. And as with the other elements, dragging it around is all you really need to do to get the look you want. Keep in mind that with um, the images, you can, oops, let's cancel that. You can uh, adjust the transparency so you'll see it's fading in and out. If you want it to be in the background so that you can put text over it, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So let's adjust the font color here. Um, let's make it red. So now you'll see that the font appears over the image uh, and it's slightly transparent. Keep in mind there is an ordering hierarchy to your images. 
Uh, if you click on the three dots with any of the elements, you'll see when you click on any of the elements here, they all have these options that you can duplicate it, trash it, or more. You can choose which layer it's on. So that way, if you find that your text is getting cut off by an image, you can move the text up to the top layer, or you can send the image to the background, whatever you need to do. So if I send it backward, um, and let's make this non-transparent, you'll see now the image is on top of it, so you can't see all of it. <clears throat> so that is really all there is to it for creating a an infographic. Uh, Next, we are going to cover the, the uh, presentations, but before we move into that, I want to show you how you're going to actually take these images and make and download them as either PDFs or as JPEGs or something else you might need. Now, this is really, really important. This is There's something here that I want you to pay attention to if you are looking for um, any of the elements, is that you need to make sure that you have um, when you are looking at the categories that you do not have anything uh, selected that is premium content. You wanna make sure everything you are using, unless you have a, um, a paid account, you wanna make sure you use free content. So the way you can tell is you'll see that little crown icon. Um, those are pro images. Uh, and if you try and grab one of those and you put it in there, it's going to have watermarks over it and it will not let you download your document unless you pay for it. So make sure if you are using just the free the free um, program here that you don't have any of the, the content that is marked premium. So all you would need to do in that case is delete it. So now to actually download this, what you're going to want to do once you're satisfied with your lovely, uh, your lovely infographic here is you're gonna go up to the share tab this is where you can choose what you want to do. So I am going to click on download. In the file type, you can choose whether you want a JPEG, PNG, PDF, etc. Um, just for the purpose of this, we're going to go with a PDF standard just because. Um, oops, let me go back and click that again. Sorry, my bad. We'll go to PDF. Let's just go standard PDF. And we want all three pages. So you can select the pages that you want. Let's say you don't want page two you can select that. So done, okay. Um, now we're just gonna click download and you'll see that it's downloading. Now this would not be possible and you'll see um, down below that it just went to my downloads folder. Now you're gonna find that if you had a paid element in there, it would not let you do this. It would require you to pay. So be very cautious that you are not using the premium content if you do not want to, um, if you don't wanna have any issues or you don't want to have to pay for the download. If you want to get back to your presentation or your infographic or the project you've been working on, um, if you don't finish it all in the first go, which is totally normal, obviously, what you're going to want to do is come back to Canva Home. Uh, if you need to, just click on the Canva icon or the Home. And from here, you can see your recent designs listed up. Um, and you can see some of the new templates. However, if you just want to go back to all of the projects you've done, all you need to do is come down to this projects tab and click on it. And it will show all of the things you've done, the designs you've worked with, uh, different folders on that you've created with your work, um, recents listed more or less chronologically, and you can search through all of them according to the type, the date, anything like that. So if you need to come back to your projects, all you'll do is come to the projects tab and then you'll click on it. And once you click on it, it'll open up exactly where you left off. The next thing we are going to take a quick look at is the presentation option within Canva. Like I said at the beginning, this is not going to be a comprehensive overview of every single option. Um, I'm picking the infographic and the presentation because they represent sort of the foundation of everything you'll do. If you can learn these two, anything else will make just as much sense. Uh, so we're going to go from our home page um, under the templates, to the, under the presentation tab, you're going to click on that and it's going to create a template for you or it's going to take you to the template creation. Now, you'll see that this is very similar to the infographic, but you have a few extra options here that we will get to in a moment. The first thing that we want to do, like the infographic, is pick a template because uh, in this case we're lazy and we like all the pretty graphics. So I'm going to pick this one here uh, and I'm looking, it does not have the pro symbol if you can see where the mouse cursor is down there. So this is a good one to start with. So we're going to pick 
that and we're just gonna click plus and there we go, we have our first slide. Now, because this is a slide show, uh, we will be animating it a little bit. We do need more than one slide. So you'll come down to your bar down here and this is your pages bar where you have your workflow. We're gonna add another page and now we're gonna go back and pick a different template, but I'm gonna go crazy and pick something completely different just for fun. Uh, we're gonna go with this. And then how about this art gallery page? So now you'll see that page one and page two have the two templates that we used. And just like the infographic, we can move it around if we want up here and up here. We can do anything we want as, as well as the text, the uh, font color, let's make that red for some reason. So just like the infographic, you build it just the same. But there are some interesting things that you can and should consider doing if you are making a presentation like this. Let's uh, click on the text here and animate it. So under the animations, you have all these different options. Um, I'm just gonna pick merge and I'll have it on both enter and exit. And down here under duration, you will be able to choose how long you want the specific slide to last in your presentation. Now, <clears throat> I should mention really quick that this is sort of an analog to um, PowerPoint presentations. Uh, I know PowerPoint is basically the go-to and it has been for basically ever, but I find PowerPoint kind of dreary and not nearly as fun to work with. So. If you're familiar with PowerPoint, this is the same basic idea and feel free to stick with that. But I like Canva a lot more. It's a lot more fun and it makes creating things more engaging. So, you know, if you like PowerPoint, eh, you can kind of disregard this part and move on. But if not, let's continue. So we applied an animation to our text there. Um, let's go ahead and play it and see if it, how it looks. Okay, so it was pretty quick, but you saw how the text just slid in. And as far as I'm aware, you can also do that to um, elements within it. We're going to do a fade on that. And over here, we're going to do drift. So yeah, this is getting really cluttered and busy, but you get the idea. See, this one's drifting, that one faded, and this one slid in. So, and they did it on the exit. Um, and you can set different transitions for each element within, within each slide. So now let's go and pick and exaggerate. We'll do the scrapbook for both of the text and we'll do it on both. Um, and like we said, these are before, these are five seconds. So let's see how that works. So now they pop in and they pop out. That's because we have the animate section over both. If you just want it on entrance or exit, you can do that as well. So let's add another page here really quickly. We'll just do a blank one um, and we'll pull some of our own elements in. Let's pull the cat back in and let's add some text. We'll add a heading again um, that says dog. And let's angle it a little bit just because we're feeling crazy and we'll put it there. Now let's animate the dog. So if we click on the element again, the bar will come up here and we'll click on animate and let's have it breathe. We'll have it breathe out. Oh, sorry, my bad, that's a scale, that's a premium one. So again, that's a good example to pay attention to how you're doing it, um, to make sure that you aren't picking something that is paid for, or at least the options aren't, if you don't wanna do that. So we're gonna have that breathe, um, and we're going to take a look at it. So you'll see it's breathing out which means it's slowly exhaling. So that's really all there is to it. Let's have this uh, rise uh, both and we'll have it rise up and let's have it reverse. Uh, now we'll keep it as we are. So now let's look at the whole slide. Now the dog is breathing and the dog text slid up on its own. So this is really all there is to it when you're creating a presentation. Um, I will also, I do also wanna mention that the images You'll see the uh, image when you click on it here, um, you get the three options like we mentioned, but there's also images or image options up here, sorry, uh, that you can play around with. And in this case, you can play around with the text or the, um, the image color. So let's say we want the dog to have a green tongue and green highlights, oops, my bad. Uh, and let's say we want to change its brown color to red because why not? So there you go. We just changed the dog around a little bit to make it fit our own needs. So just like the text color, you can change image color as well and you can crop it if you need to. 
Uh, so if that's all you need to do, you can crop it as well. Uh, and then you'll be able to see the full duration of your video down here. And just like the infographic, you'll come up to share um, and you will click to download. Only this time you might want to do an MP4 video or you can do a series of images. The choice is really up to you, but if this is a presentation, you should probably consider doing a video format so that you can actually play the entire thing all at once. And as before, uh, you just want to make sure that you select the pages that you want. Let's say we don't want page number two and you will be done. Uh, you can choose the quality you want uh, if you pay, but it should standardize to 1080p. Um, and then it will just download to your downloads folder um, as the MP4 and you are set to upload that or use that however you want. So hopefully this quick overview uh, gives you everything you need to get started. Like I said, uh, Canva is a lot more robust than what I'm showing you, but these this basic look will get you going so that you can figure out the rest on your own. That being said, if you do have any questions, feel free to let me know, but this should get you started for everything you need. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video.